Well, good morning to all of you that have been so good to join our quarterly DE&I webinar for the California Morning. We're so glad to have you with us. And I am extremely excited about our speakers for today. But before that, you know how everybody has their commercials? Well, we have ours because we want to say a special thank you to Prime Lending for being our sponsor for our Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. So thank you so much to Prime Lending. So our speakers, I'm Rosalind Hardy, and my company is QCP Systems. But today I am acting in the role as a member of the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee for the Mortgage Bankers Association, California Mortgage Bankers Association, which I'm so excited to be part of this committee. And we have Monica and Dave here from Guild Mortgage that are also part of this committee with us. And we just want to share some insights with you of what, what they're doing in their organization, which is extremely exciting. I'm learning so many new acronyms, y'all, as we go into this mission. ERG is my latest new acronym that I'm learning. And y'all are going to learn about it today from Monica and Dave as they share with you. I'm not even going to tell you what it stands for. I'm going to let them tell you what it stands for if you don't already know. Um, but to introduce you to our speakers, and I'm going to share with you a little bit more about what the DE&I um, committee is all about at the California MBA. But first, I want to introduce to you uh, Dave Robertson. Dave Robertson is the senior vice president with Guild Mortgage. He is the chief human resources officer. And Dave has been overseeing the company's human resources and management training programs, which focuses on the capabilities and leadership best practices within Guild's growing workforce. And he does this for the company across the country. He has been, he has got over 4,000 plus employees at Guild Mortgage, which is not a small group of people, but he has been doing this for a while. He has, he leads the Guild University, which is the company's core learning and development center, which features and coaches and mentors ongoing professional developments. And all this I'm sure speaks to their efforts and their initiatives into their DEI programs that they're executing there at Guild. And he is Guild Mortgage in San Diego. I want to spotlight this. Guild has been recognized nationally for its corporate culture and named a top workplace by the San Diego Union Tribune every year. Hear what I'm saying, y'all. Every year since 2013. That's not easy to do for a mortgage company, okay? So I applaud Gil for that. He has over 25 years of training in human re in training in human resources. And so you have got someone who is an expert and truly understand about this space of working with people and people development. And our next speaker, which I'm so happy to introduce, is Monica Rosso. Am I saying your last name right? Monica. Really close, Rosalind. I appreciate it. It's Rosso. Rosso. See? Okay. Thank you. Monica Rosso, she is also in human resources and has been doing that for over 15 years. She has had increasingly responsible roles across various industries. So it's not just the mortgage industry, across multiple industries. Okay. And she has been with Gill since 2015 and was promoted to the DE&I manager in 2021. She has her undergraduate degree in Michigan State University and an MBA from Seattle Pacific. And she is currently splitting her time. This is a busy woman between Washington and Michigan. So we thank her for being able to take the time today with us to share with us what are the ERGs and why are they important within the Guild Mortgage Organization. So at this point, I'm going to turn this over to our speakers. And thank, thank you all for coming. 
Thank you. Thank you, Rosalind, for that. And good news for the rest of you. It's really Monica that's doing the presentation today, so you won't have to listen to me. Um, but I do want to say, you know, Monica has been helping us with DNI activities for several years here at Guild. And it got to the point as our company grew and we became across the company, it's like we need a person to really head that up, specifically DNI. So that's why she, she's in that role, but she's been doing a lot of DEI activities for many, many years for us here at Guild. And yeah, it's something that um, I'm, I'm very happy to say, I have such executive support here for this, which is so important at a company. Um, and it is such a huge critical thing for us. I talk all the time in the, well, the other executives in our top executive meetings about the things we're doing. So it's, it's really great um, here at this company. Like you, you mentioned our culture, that's why is that we have that support up there. So very happy to be here. Um, this was such a great topic for us to talk about because it's so fresh for us. As you're gonna hear Monica talk about, we started these ERGs, which you'll find out what that means in a minute, um, a little over a year ago. And so as we've launched these, this is, this is fresh for us in terms of the, our best practices and lessons learned. And so we just wanna be able to share that with all of you. So at that, I'm gonna let Monica take it over. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate that. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about Guild's experience setting up ERGs, um, and we're gonna give some baseline information on what ERGs are. It's a relatively, newish concept in the in the mortgage space but ERGs have been around for a long time in other industries and it's time that mortgage caught up uh, so with that can you switch the slides Samantha so let's go into a little bit about background of ERGs um, ERGs are employee resource groups uh, they're internal communities uh, within orgs that are comprised of employees linked together by shared backgrounds or interests. Generally, ERGs um, support employees to come together with a unifying mission uh, to create a positive workplace and culture where employees with different backgrounds and interests are respected, treated equally, and given opportunities to succeed. The most common ERGs are generally racial ethnic um, ERGs, women ERGs, military ERGs, and then LGBTQIA plus groups. Um, you'll hear different vocab around ERGs. They can often be referred to as affinity groups or diversity groups. Although at Guild, we, we use the term ERG, and I do believe that that's the most, most popular way to refer to them. Next slide. They're not a new concept. Um, although they're relatively new in the mortgage space, 90% of Fortune 500s have ERGs. About 10% of US employees belong to at least one ERG group. So these are not, you know, not a new concept whatsoever. Uh, and as our marketplace shifts, um, the mortgage space is definitely changing. Um, major demographic shifts are coming uh, to achieve growth objectives. Lenders really need to work on developing a more diverse customer base. An important component of this is going to be developing a diverse and inclusive workforce and employee base to better serve all companies. And ERGs are one way to support different employees. Next slide. So let's talk a little bit about Guild's experience with ERGs. Uh, currently, we have three groups. Uh, we have a military veteran group. It's known as the seventh branch internally. We have approximately 200 employees who are part of that group. We have a black ERG. It's quickly growing. We have about 150 employees participating in it right now. And then we have an LGBTQIA group, which is internally known as PRISM. That's an acronym for proudly representing identity and sexuality and mortgage. That group, although it's our smallest, it's our fastest growing right now, and we've got about 100 employees in it. Uh, in the future, we're going to be launching, we already know this, a Hispanic Latino ERG. I've committed to launching that group later this year in 2022 in conjunction with Hispanic Heritage Month, which runs in September and October. 
And then in 2023, we know we want to do more of these groups. Uh, we're still landing on which groups um, we're going to be launching, but we're thinking maybe a women's group in 2023 or an Asian group in 2023. So that's where Guild is at in this moment. Next slide. So some success stories around our current status with our ERGs. Um, you, as I mentioned before, we've got our military veteran ERG, over 200 members. It's our longest standing group at this point. Some things that that group has been able to advocate and champion for, so some success stories. First and foremost, PTO for active duty military. Um, this was not on our radar at all. Before we launched this military veteran ERG group, we were not aware of how many employees we have that are actual active duty service persons in the reserves, in the National Guard, that have to leave every year to go on mandatory training or to go, unfortunately, on funeral orders. And this group was able to bring to our attention that we needed a PTO policy to better support them. So because of the advocacy through this group, we were able to champion for PTO for these active duty military. And effective this year, we now offer two weeks paid time off. So when these folks need to go do things like get retrained, they're not having to use their vacation time. They can use their new PTO time for that. In addition, this group really highlighted that although Guild is headquartered in San Diego, it's a Navy town, Guild supports military. Um, we've never actually had Veterans Day off until this year. So this group really called to our attention the need to give our employees Veterans Day off. And I'm happy to report that in 2023, we have Veterans Day off for the first time ever. And that's largely because of this group. Um, and also, you know, we have regular learning sessions through this military veteran ERG, and we were able to host a representative from the VA who came and spoke to our group recently and was able to give a lot of information regarding navigating the intricacies of the VA for our um, employees who are veterans, um, and it was wildly popular. Um, and then, you know, and another success story that I absolutely love is with our Black ERG. Um, anecdotally, we had an employee come to us uh, who was recently onboarding or onboarded. And in our, you know, newfound work from home virtual environment that, we're, that so much of us are in, the employee said that the Black ERG was the first place that she was able to find others that looked like her. Uh, and that was especially touching uh, that we were able to give that new employee a sense of community and belonging through our Black ERG. So just some anecdotal success stories here. Next slide. Next slide, thank you. So uh, our ERGs have been wildly successful. Uh, and I'd like to give some background on some best practices, some learning lessons, that we've gone through as we've set these groups up. Uh, the, if you're interested in setting up an ERG at, within your company, step one I'm going to recommend is to make sure that you have leadership buy-in. Uh, without leadership buy-in and support for ERGs, you're not going to be able to get them off the ground. Um, top level support is paramount. paramount. Uh, you need a budget and resources to affect real change. And the only way you're going to get those things is if your leaders buy into the concept. Uh, luckily at Guild, I have phenomenal executive support. Um, our leaders really understand the importance of DEI. They understand the importance of these groups. And they've given budget resources uh, and their commitment into these groups, which have enabled us to get them off the ground and, and ensure that they're successful. Uh, bake some guiding principles around your ERGs if you're gonna launch them. Uh, our ERGs are always company sponsored, employee led and open to everyone. So although, for instance, with PRISM, our LGBTQIA plus group, obviously that group caters to members of the LGBTQIA community, but not all of the members of PRISM are necessarily members of that community. They're also friends and allies. Every one of our ERGs is open to every one of our employees. 
a lot of employees don't necessarily fit the demographic of the particular ERG, but they are interested in supporting their colleagues, coworkers. Um, for instance, with our military veteran group, we have a lot of spouses or children of military veterans who uh, take part in that group. Um, so all of our ERGs always open to everyone. Uh, ERG participation by employees is always voluntary. And our ERGs always obviously adhere to policies, procedures. They align with larger company mission, vision, and values. Next slide. So each one of our ERGs is connected to an executive sponsor, an employee sponsor, and myself, the DEI manager. We always continually assess and support these groups. With our executive sponsor, a key, key element is our executive sponsors are always SVP level or above. That's strategic and done um, on purpose because our executive sponsors need a direct line into our top level leadership. So executive sponsors have the ear of C-levels. They are able to champion for the, the things that the ERGs highlight um, and having that direct line is really important. We've got solid policies and procedures around each of our ERGs. Uh, this was a learning lesson for us, uh, but it's important to have policies and procedures and practices in place before you start your ERGs. At Guilds, we never recognize ERGs that don't have a legitimate business purpose. So we would never approve of an ERG, for instance, that's hobby-based or politi politically based or an ERG that's uh, designed to exclude, divide, or oppose any other employee or ERG group. Uh, setting these policies and procedures around which type of ERGs you're going to permit ahead of time will avoid headaches. On a case-by-case -case basis, Guild doesn't recognize uh, ERGs that are faith-based or do not meet minimum participation thresholds, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, ERGs that oppose our mission, vision, or values, or can't locate an employee or an executive sponsor. Next slide. Next slide. Um, each one of our ERGs uh, has an employee board. There are five member boards. There's a formal application process for joining the board. Uh, we have a selection committee of various stakeholders that go through the application and pick the best members. Uh, a lot of our criteria is based on skill sets and having a diverse board with different geographies and job titles, things of that nature. Our board members serve for a minimum of one year. And then there's an approximately three to five hour commitment from each of our board members, although this ebbs and flows based on uh, specific initiatives that each ERG is working on at any given time. The structure of our board is outlined here. You can see there's an executive sponsor for each board, uh, an employee sponsor for each board, and then there's four representatives um, on the board for a total of five board members. And then each board uh, obviously is connected closely to me, the DEI manager role, uh, and uh, I help continually assess things and make sure that we're moving forward uh, within the group. So next slide. Perfect. So these employee boards are paramount for the success of our groups. Uh, without our employee boards, we wouldn't have effective ERGs. Our ERGs, like I mentioned before, are employee-led. So keeping the board members engaged is really, really important. Um, I do that using a variety of means, but basically I always am reinforcing the importance of these board roles. Uh, I keep managers of the employee board members abreast of their contributions. I especially like to do this around performance review time uh, because the board contributions for our employees um, is a lot. And, you know, if we can bake in uh, contributions to performance reviews, that really drives, it further drives the importance of these roles. 
Uh, we've given small spot bonuses in the past for our employee board members. Our, C our CEO can give direct thank yous to our board members, which is very helpful. And then we make the board roles highly visible across the organization. So we are continually, um, you know, uh, through our communication channels, mentioning the contributions of board members. So we have internal SharePoint page that we advertise that on. We have company newsletters. We're continually really trying to make these, the contributions of the board members very visible so that we can keep engagement board members high. In terms of ERG initiatives, each board selects long and short-term initiatives. Um, these can run the absolute gamut. Some of our boards have chosen to develop nonprofit partnerships with volunteer opportunities. Some of our boards in the case, like in the case of our military veteran group have advocated for policy changes. Um, some of the groups just use the groups as networking opportunity. Uh, we are in a virtual environment like so many, many of you on this call are, uh, and we really utilize our internal SharePoint site which is a communication website that probably a lot of you use. Um, and you can uh, develop channels and teams um, and different ways of communicating through SharePoint. And we really utilize our SharePoint site to allow our ERG members to communicate with one another. Other ERGs have worked on developing mentor mentorship programs. Uh, we've revised internal trainings, DEI trainings. In the case of the military veteran group, we've revised VA loan trainings, um, and we've given resources to the entire organization. We've driven resources to the entire organization through our ERGs. Next slide. So one of the ERG's large initiatives is a quarterly all-hands meeting. Each one of the groups hosts um, a meeting each quarter where all members get together. Uh, it's a 60 minute quarterly meeting held during business hours. And that is a guild recommended best practice to hold these during business hours and to allow all employees to attend during business hours. They are recorded uh, if, if members can't attend due to scheduling conflict, but I would really encourage if you're gonna launch an ERG to allow employees to participate on company time. Uh, most of our meetings are held mid-morning and that's designed because we um, work across time zones at Guild. We're in 42 states, um, so we need to, to have employees collaborate all the way from the East Coast to Hawaii and it's easier to do that mid-morning. Our all-hands quarterly meetings are used as a time to gather, to give announcements, to host guest speakers, uh, we have a little fun sometimes. We play trivia and games, give away small prizes. We use the time to educate and celebrate and get together. Next slide. So, um, some lessons learned uh, from us with setting up our ERGs. Uh, if you're interested in setting up your own ERG at your own company, uh, I mentioned this before, but be proactive, set up policies and procedures before you start, decide what you're going to permit and what you're not going to permit. It's gonna save you a lot of um, stress and headaches uh, if you know what you're going to allow before you get, you get going. Um, if possible, have a dedicated administrative role oversee your ERGs. In the case of Guild, we have strong leadership uh, support so my uh, role was able to be developed um, and that's been the, of the utmost importance as we've gotten these things off the ground to have me in the background kind of keeping things chugging along. Um, you always want an executive sponsor for each group. Each one of our ERGs is tied to an executive sponsor that's an SVP or above. You want someone who has an ear of leadership who can drive change so that when the ERG board members or other members notify us of issues, we can, we can forward that, that up to C-levels. And then finally, um, if ERGs are a new concept at your organization, which I'm guessing that they are, expect minimal blowback. Um, change can sometimes be difficult and hard, but don't let this discourage you. Uh, we at Guild have uh, really 
our ERGs have, have experienced minimal blowback, but the, the positive things that have come out through them well, well outweigh um, any minimal complaints that, that have tr trickled in. Um, real change uh, sometimes isn't easy to accomplish. And, and I'll just add to that, that part of that is because ERGs are completely new in a lot of the mortgage industry and certainly at Guild. So a lot of employees didn't really understand what they were. And then once we kind of spelled out, well, this is what they are and this is what it's for and it's open for everyone, then they were like, oh, okay. So, so a lot of it was due to uh, it just being a new concept here at Guild and in the industry that we are in. And next slide. Oh, Rosalind, I think you're on mute. Thank you, I was talking to myself. So our next slide, Monica and Dave, thank you so much for that presentation and in introducing the ERGs, the Employee Resource Group. We all know what that stands for now, our new acronym in the industry. And I don't know, Samantha, if we have anyone that has gotten any questions, but I've been jotting down some questions as I Oh, I love it. Yes, we haven't had any come in yet. Uh, just some comments saying, you know, what a great presentation and very informative. So thank you both for being here. Um, but Rosalyn, ask away. Okay, then I'm going to ask away because you left us a little time here, Monica. Okay. <laughs> and so my first question is, is that I did not realize like I said, I didn't even know what ERG is until you all said ERG. But you indicated that this is not new in other industries and in other corporations. They've been around for a while. Why do you think this is now, why is it new to the mortgage industry? Why is it that we hadn't thought about ERGs within the mortgage industry? You have any thoughts on that? You want me to start off, Monica? <laughs> so my, I mean, I my thoughts on that is um, the mortgage industry, so much of it uh, traditionally, and even still today, mm -hmm. is about staff that comes here who knows someone that's already here. It's referral-based type. You know, when you look at our loan officers, right? Mm -hmm. No one goes off to college to become a loan officer. Right. How does someone become a loan officer? It's because there's some loan officer somewhere who knows someone says, hey, I think you'd be a great loan officer. Come here and, and work here. Well, who is that going to be? Mostly it's going to be people that they hang around with and know, which are probably gonna be people that look like them. So, so that's part of it, but, but, but you all, so traditionally just not been the mortgage industry, it's just not the most diverse. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna say it and be candid and honest and transparent here. There you go. And secondly, um, you know, it's very clear, look at the United States demographic in the United States, it's mm -hmm. changing, right? We're becoming much, much, much more diverse. That means our customers, are becoming much, much more diverse. And we need to be able to serve those customers and serve them the best way. And so it's it's those things coming together that now a lot of mortgage industries are going, ah, we, we can't be left behind. What are we doing? We need to make sure this is a, a, a you know very critical thing for us. And while Guild has been doing some things for many, many years, like I said earlier, and Monica has been working on some DE&I -E -E activities for many years here at Guild, it wasn't until more recently where we said, you know what, she's going to be dedicated to this because our company is really committed to that. And we also recently hired a, a VP um, who uh, is focused on increasing our diversity market share. So, and we work in tandem with her. So she's more on the sales side while we're more on the, you know, HR corporate side. So yeah, I think you're beginning to see companies, not just the mortgage industry, but I did mention that specifically, uh, who are seeing, Okay, the, the 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 demographics in the country are changing. The demographics for us are going to have to change. They will, whether we want it to or not. But of course, we do want it to. So mm -hmm. we got to get on board. And so that's that's where that came from. Well, thank you so yeah. much for that. And I think you hit it right on point as to why our industry has has been lagging. Because I've heard that before, Dave, mm -hmm. about how we actually source our labor force in this right. industry. Right. And it typically does come from referrals from friends and family. Mm -hmm. And so now we have to be much more intentional, which is a new word I acquired exactly. being right. on the DEI, being very exactly intentional. Right. <laughs> and our hiring practices, 
and, and going beyond what we are normally used to doing when we are hiring new employees. So thank you for that. Another question, and those of you that are still on with us, please, you chime in some questions to Samantha, and I will be quiet and let your question come through, but I was jotting down questions while Monica was sharing with us. And my next one is, is who at Gill, who actually initiates the ERG? Is it um, you, Monica, or the HR, or does employees come to you and say, hey, I want to start an ERG group like this? How does yeah, that that's that's an excellent question. And I think, unfortunately, I think, Samantha, maybe we tabbed too quickly over a really important slide that went over the sure. process for that. Yeah, um, I would love to, actually. Okay. Yeah, if you could go back. Thank you. I think it's right here. Perfect. Okay. Thank, thank you. This this threw me off a little bit. Uh, okay. You know, <laughs> when we stick sometimes. This. Sorry about that. Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, and I'd love to talk about this because we have formal policy and procedure around how ERGs are set up. Mm -hmm. um, the, they're largely they have historically been employee driven. So an employee will come to us, come to HR. Um, wishing to form an ERG and there's specific cr criteria that need to be met. Uh, first and foremost, if an employee wants the ERG, they need to be willing to serve as the employee sponsor of that group. Um, they have to be in good standing performance wise. They have to commit to serving on the ERG board for a term of at least one year. Um, there are minimum participation thresholds that each ERG has to maintain, and that is a minimum of 100 employees. That's the number that works for us. Uh, Guild has about 5,000 employees overall, so that 100 employee threshold works really, it's a number that's been working really well for us so far. Obviously, if you're a smaller firm, your minimum participation threshold would be different than that. Um, Membership and participation is always voluntary and open to everyone. I went into that a little bit, um, mm -hmm. but these groups are designed to support and not um, alienate, always, always, always. Mm -hmm. um, so any request for an ERG comes through to HR. It, it eventually makes its way to my desk, obviously. Um, each ERG has to be able to identify an executive sponsor. We've never run into issues finding executive sponsors. Our executives are clamoring to want to want to support these groups, um, which has been great, wonderful. Um, and then obviously each ERG is assessed regularly and any ERG would be discontinued um, if they couldn't follow these policies, if they didn't abide by our mission, vision, values, or if those minimum participation thresholds weren't met. Oh, okay. Well, wonderful. Yeah. So I appreciate you going back over that. Yeah. And you indicated that it's you spared another question, Monica. That I'm is glad. Open, open to everyone. And so your ERGs, you indicated that they're there for support, but for anyone that wants to join and maybe just learn about, you know, what, what's up with you all in this? What what's going on in here? And they just want to educate themselves. Mm -hmm and become more culturally aware of others that are working within their organization is that something that you all encourage for others because you indicate here that it's open to everybody a hundred percent yes a hundred percent and that's what we like to see in fact i love to see yeah. people joining these ergs just for education and support reasons um that's always a beautiful beautiful thing that we that we definitely encourage yeah, and, and so we do a lot of those numbers. They are people who don't, who aren't maybe that demographic, but they're there because they're a friend, they're an ally, and they want to learn. And, and education, I wanted to emphasize that again, education is such a big piece of this. So just recently in our Black ERG, um, we had uh, uh, we had a speaker come from the, the National MBA, first of all, to talk about how they're trying to improve home ownership for minorities, right? And that was great to hear. But then we had one of our board members on the Black ERG do an education piece on Juneteenth. And it was so great to hear about that, right? Because it's you know Juneteenth right now, right? Coming up. So it was great to hear about that and learn about that because again, I'm I'm a kind of person I like to be candid and transparent. Let's face it, our American educational system, we haven't done a great job of teaching 
history of minorities. You know, I think back about black history. I learned very little back when I, I was a million years ago when I was in school, but, but you know, when I was in high school, I learned very little about that, right? And so having this education piece is so great for people. And, um, and so that education piece is, is just is just really, really important to emphasize when we're when you're trying to promote and talk about these groups. Awesome. And, and and yeah, and frankly, from a business standpoint, I think we have some white loan officers who are interested in um, marketing to different non-white groups. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they want to learn uh, more about these communities and groups. Um, and so they're getting involved in, in, in the ERGs just so that they can learn more. Isn't that, I love that part. Loan mm -hmm. officers seeing opportunity, okay? Right. Where they can right. learn about older, other cultures and how they can actually engage with them and to help them down their path of home ownership by understanding what they're dealing with. That That's awesome. Okay, and then, you indicated that it's open to everyone. Is it open? Because I heard you mention uh, children and family. Do you open it to outside external people or strictly employees? No, and I don't want that to be misconstrued. Um, it is open to everyone, but you need to be an employee. Uh, in in uh, I think I was referencing specifically the military veteran group, uh -huh. the seventh branch. Um, perhaps you are a spouse, mm -hmm or a child um, of a veteran or an active duty um, military person, but you are employed at Guild. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so, but the, but the spouse also is employed, you're saying? Both parties uh, are? Well, well um, perhaps your wife or husband is an active duty military mm -hmm. or a veteran, yeah. and you are an employee of Guild. Yeah, you, have, you have to be an employee. Yeah. Uh, no matter what, you have to be an employee. Okay. Yeah, to you, be an employee, you do. It's open we're to we're all internal. employees. It's open to all employees, whether you're a military veteran or not. You're okay. you're welcome to come to the military veteran ERG and learn more about okay. what military veterans gotcha. go through and whatever. Yeah. Okay. So it's open. All are open to all employees. Yeah. Okay. But, but they are. Yep. Yeah, they're internal groups. It's okay. Got it. Got it. And so, how do you the board that you spoke about? Mm -hmm. What is it that the board is charged to doing and how do you keep them engaged? Mm, great, great, great questions. Um, so number one, the all boards are tasked with hosting quarterly all hands meetings. Um, that is a big task for them. We, we do really engaging quarterly all hands where we gather everyone. Uh, we use them for education and, and networking and to have a little fun. Uh, the other initiatives the boards are tasked with doing are up to the boards. Um, my role is to take their ideas and synthesize and keep them on track, but the boards ultimately decide what they want to focus on. And some of our boards have focused on developing nonprofit partnerships and volunteer opportunities. Some of our boards have decided to really um, work on internal guild policy and things that need to change uh, regarding our policies and procedures and uh, maybe our HR benefit offerings. Um, some boards decide to uh, really focus on education um, they and educating members. It really depends on the individual boards. And then in terms of board engagement, that piece is so key. I can't stress it enough. These groups are employee led and they're designed to be employee led, which means the boards need to keep the, the boards need to be engaged. Um, mm -hmm. And I do that through a number of, of, of ways. Um, first and foremost, when I gather my board members together, we all have a really good relationship and I try to keep things fun so that they want to hear from me. They want to get together. Mm -hmm. uh, Second, um, I always keep the managers of, of the boards um, uh, informed about the things that the boards are working on because these are leadership positions and a lot of my board members are looking um, to develop and grow into management supervisory roles and um, keeping managers of my board members abreast of what's going on um, uh, really helps develop them from a performance development perspective. 
Uh, and then our CEOs, our CEO gives thank yous. We've given small spot bonuses to our board members um, to thank them for their service. Uh, we are always, always, always showcasing the the board members and the things the board members are working on through our employee newsletter and on our internal SharePoint page. What has happened is these roles have become highly visible and highly coveted through these kind of actions, right? So people really want to join the boards. We get a ton of applications that we sort through for these board spots, um, but it's paramount that you make these positions important uh, so that people want to join the boards and then once they're on the boards they're participating that is and, that's wonderful and I'll, I'll i'll add in so far when we've started all of our brgs so far we've had more people um, apply to be on the board than we have room for which is a great problem to have <laughs> but um you know like most recently with the black erg we had so many great candidates some that came from another company where they were on that, that ERG at the company they came from. So we had to pick, all right, who has the different different skill sets that we needed, right? Um, and, and, and bring those on. And then the others, we said, oh my gosh, thank you. We'd love to have you on. Would you be interested next year? You know, because there's kind of a one year term. So, right. so far we've been blessed that we've had so much interest in people being board members. And then I'll say another good thing that Monica does is that every so often she'll follow up with a board member's manager to let that manager know this board this person is so great they're doing a great job on the board they're making such an impact da, 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 da. so you know giving those kudos to the manager of the board member that's helpful too so that's a good tip to keep in mind yeah Wonderful. we've had we've had people apply for these positions year over year after year after year to try to get on the boards um that's how coveted they are okay that so it sounds like it also offers some lift in their own personal development and performance and, and achieving maybe some promotions within the organization, et cetera. Yep. That yep. You're, that's you're getting it, Rosalind. Yep. Yeah, exactly. you're exactly right. It's it's interesting to see some of them who haven't presented in from a large crowd before. Now they're on these webinars and they're presenting some piece. And you yeah. could tell maybe it's for the first time they're a little nervous at first. Yeah. Then they get going in their rhythm. And so yeah, it's 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 a professional development for them as well. All right. Well, that, you know, I am so pleased that you all were able to take your time to share this with us. It is such an important now tool that we need to use within the mortgage industry to move this ball forward. As you indicated, Dave, our country is diversifying. There are so many Americans that want to own a home. And that is our mission here in this mortgage industry. And that is to help people ultimately to become homeowners. And so we need to we need to make sure that our consumer base are seeing people that look like us and know us and understand us. So bring it in. So thank you for sharing this with us. And those of you that are with us, go forth, be inspired to take this back to your companies. Monica has left us with, I know that Samantha, this presentation will be available. Yes. On the it's California website on our committee page, and we actually did have one more question. If we have a few okay, minutes, absolutely we'll cover it really quick. Um, we had a question come in that said, could, we, "Could you more specifically articulate the particular benefits Guild has received through its ERG program?" Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm happy to do that. Um, uh, I think some wonderful examples um, were through our military veteran group. Um, advocating for PTO policy changes for active duty members. Uh, so now anyone who's in the National Guard or needs to um, do service orders can get two weeks paid time off, not have to you know, uh, use their vacation balance. That was a big one. Getting Veterans Day off for the first time in 2022 is gonna be a big one for, for our employees. They're excited about that. Uh, uh, and another one was, um, you know, revising our VA loan trainings. Our military veteran group was able to make changes to our existing learning and development uh, curriculum for our VA loan trainings. Guild is a large provider of VA loans. And honestly, our training around VA loans was really lacking before this group got involved. Um, so we're 
able to make an impact for our customer base, better we can better serve folks who are coming in and wanting to get a VA loan now. Yeah. Okay. And I, and I think also, if I can add to that, um, we've already seen this sense of belonging, right, being increased. Um, as Monica mentioned, when we had our first, you know, Black ERG meeting, and we had this young lady on, uh, black, black lady uh, works for us, and she said, well, I've been here several months, but I got to tell you, I was here two months before I saw somebody that looked like me. And I know Monica, Monica and I both were like, ah, oh, you know, and so she's like, it just, she just felt so much more of a sense of belonging. And I can see a lot of people that had their camera on going, you know, agreeing, you know, nodding their head. And it was just like, oh, this is one of the reasons we do this, right? And so the networking that then happens, you know, they meet each other, they start talking. Uh, you know, we saw that with the military. Oh, I was also in the army. Where were you? Da, 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 da. And, and then you see that, you know, again, with the black ERG and this networking and, and talking. So that's a big piece of it is, is the networking that helps increase a sense of belonging and inclusion um, in the company, especially if you've got folks that don't quite often see people that look like them that often. Now they know there, there are more people that look like them. Um, they yes. just may not see you day to day and, it, and, it, and they're able to network. And, and so that right. sense of belonging is there as well. And a lot of my examples are around the military veteran group because that has been our longest standing group at this point. Um, a wonderful story that we have through that group is also uh, the support that we've been able to offer to trailing spouses. I'm not sure if uh, folks on this call understand quite what happens um, if you were a military spouse, but if you're a military spouse and your, your husband or wife gets change orders and has to move across the country and you are a trailing spouse, a lot of times you have to quit your job. Um, to follow your spouse when they are relocated to a to, to you know a different a different base, and um, we've been able to help a couple trailing spouses transfer internally through Guild. Um, uh, the trailing spouse has reached out to our group, and we've been able to help um, connect them uh, to resources to get them to be able to transfer internally. Um, so we've driven a lot of impact for individuals. Wonderful. Did any other questions come in, Samantha? That was it. Just other okay. comments saying what a great presentation this was. So okay. really Good. appreciate you, Dave and Monica, taking the time today. Um, it's been very informative and just really appreciate you guys. Absolutely, we do. And we're not going to keep, but I'm going to weigh in here real quickly, Monica, on that question, okay. because yeah. I've been in this mortgage industry for over 35 years and I know my peoples, okay? <laughs> and sometimes with the we are we are about the bottom line we're about does this is this going to somehow factor into my bottom line as i put forth these efforts and i think what you all have shared with us about the employee performance the enthusiasm that your employees are having by having access to the erg group and knowing that there are people in the guild mortgage that looks like them come from their culture can understand them that helps to inspire employee retention they don't want to leave the company they want to stay there and that was one of the things that as you mentioned dave about belonging when you're talking about diversity equity and inclusion it's one thing to bring diverse population into your workforce it's another thing to be able to keep them there and some of the surveys and feedback that we have gotten from the employee hr world is that so many times they come in and because there's not that sense of belonging there's not that sense that hey nobody else here looks like me they don't understand me and so people don't want to necessarily stay and they move on and so i think this definitely has that benefit to the mortgage industry who typically experience a lot of turnover. And so turnover is costly to a company. And so if you're able to retain these employees, then that is going to be very much to your bottom line. I'm just saying y'all, right. they hit that bottom line. And also when you have happy employees, they want to do better in their job. So you'll get more production across the board. That's to the bottom line y'all. So there is benefit to truly embracing the DE and I initiatives and programs, please go forth. Use the presentation that Monica 
has shared with us that gives you that whole framework for how you can get started with your own ERG programs. And I'm gonna shut up now, Samantha, so that All we right. can go ahead and let folks go. And thank everyone for joining us. The DEI committee has a page on the California MBA's website. I encourage you to please take some time to go on there, look at the resources that we have developed that are there for you to help you. We have podcasts that you can listen to that will also be inspiring. And we're going to continue to do that. So thanks one and all for coming. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you, Dave and Monica for coming and sharing oh. with us. We really appreciate it. Thank Take you. Care, Enjoyed it. Thank you.